Hello and welcome back. If you've been following our videos up till now, you know we've been outside roughing it up against the English elements. We're finally inside the building, so we're going to be doing all the internals now. And we're kicking it off with a hemp wall. Uh, it's going to be a feature hemp wall, so it's going to be very different to the outside one. For the internal one, we need the surface of the wall to be immaculate because it's going to be left exposed. So we're doing like a exoskeleton type formwork to accommodate this. We're also going to be fireproofing the wall and we need to, it's quite interesting the metal grabbing to do this because hempcrete isn't certified as fireproof, the cast in situ, so we have, we've got to work around this, so we'll go into that. Uh, we're going to be doing the socket outlets differently to what we did in the external walls and the structure of the wall itself has to change to accommodate the hemp. So firstly we've got to get on and build the wall, but we'll come back to you and go into it all a bit more later. Right, that's the stud wall you've just seen go up. Um, there's a few different elements I'm going to explain to you about and tell you why we've done what we've done. Um, I'll probably start off with the structural design. Is um, You might be familiar with one of the regs in the UK is that if you do a structural wall, you have to, and it's a timber wall, you have to clad it with a ply over the top, um, I think to provide it racking strength to stop the wall twisting. Uh, I spoke to the structural engineer and said we need a way around this because if we're going to clad this with a ply, it's going to stop us. What we, when we're doing the hemp, we need the hemp to be able to go in between all of these studs to encase all of the timbers so it locks in around the wall. If there was a sheet of ply and we were putting hemp on top, the hemp might want to separate from the ply and it's not going to key in with the wall well enough. Um, so what we did to change the design when I spoke to him was we added in these diagonal bracing supports and that is going to act, that is going to act as the racking strength for the wall. Um, secondly, for a similar reason, this tim because it's a timber wall, it has to be fireproofed and in the UK we have to give it, uh, I think it's half an hour or an hour, I think it's an hour's worth of fireproofness. Um, so what we have to do, what normally you would have to do with that is clad the whole wall again with a sheet of uh, this fireboard that we've, you can see here. But again, for the same reasons of the ply, that's going to stop the hemp going through the wall and allowing us to key the hemp in with the wall. So our way around it, which I've not seen done before, it took a lot of time, but uh, this is the only thing building control would accept, is this pink fireboard that you can see we've put around each individual timber, every timber. Um, but it's funny enough because you might have seen our earlier hemp fire episode where we put a, a block of hemp on a fire just to test out how fireproof it is. And um, even though there's no certification for how fireproof it is that building control will accept, it did last. It, it singed into the hemp after about an hour and a quarter for about two inches. Uh, we're going to have about two inches cover over the stud. So in theory, this wall actually is about two hours worth of fire resistance is what it has. Um, so yeah, so after that, uh, we've also, I'll tell you a bit about the shuttering system we're using. Um, as I said at the beginning, because this is going to be an exposed hemp wall, we don't want to be screwing through it, pulling screws out the hemp after it's finished or anything that's going to give a bit of a rough surface. We want it to be really uniform and as perfect as we can get it basically. So what we've done to get around this is we've basically built like an exoskeleton for the shuttering. And the way we've done it on this is, um, you can see this is going to be a part of the archway so we don't need the hemp to come around the face of the timber this side so we've fixed an osb there that comes out beyond the wall and we've done that both sides and then we've made up these individual panels that we're going to lift in we've got a load stacked up here all ready to go and um, the idea is that you see the timbers here are short of the end of the panel it means this panel will slot in and be uh, and slot in with the panel below like this.
there we go. Probably I'll have a hammer when we're doing it. But the idea is the bottom ones are permanent, we fixed them in already, but as we fill up, when that's full, we'll put in the next panel, we'll level it, and we'll screw it in using screws through this OSB into our bits of timber that are fixed to the panel. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do that, we'll take that to the top. Um, the reason we've done the panels, you might be wondering, at this height and so short, is just because we, actually, we haven't actually got a lot of room in this cavity to place the hemp, uh, like we did on the exter external walls. So because of that, with our tamper, we're thinking that's a sensible height that we can still get in to tamp this before we go up a level. Not only that, because of these diagonal uh, braces, timbers in the wall itself and the noggins, if we're up here with the shuttering and we're trying to get down to fill underneath here, it's going to be very difficult to get the hemp in there, basically. Um, so yeah, that's our shuttering system. Another thing I'll tell you about is above the uh, archway where we've put a timber lintel. Uh, this is one of them situations where it was unavoidable that we couldn't have a void to go through, a hole to go through the wall for the hemp to key in with the lintel. Because the lintel structure is just one big lump. So we've needed to do something that's going to allow the hemp to key in with the lintel that's different to the rest of the wall where it's being encased. Um, and what we've done with that is we've fit a 19 millimetre batten on top with six millimetre ply cross um, straps over the top of them. And the idea is that the hemp's going to be able to get in behind the uh, ply and lock in with the lintel. So that's what we're hoping anyway. I mean, as I say, there's nothing online, there's nothing in the, the textbooks to tell us how to do this. So it's uh, mine and Phil's design on this, but um, we're quite confident it's going to be all right and work. So yeah, next thing is, we're going to be mixing up hemp, which we're going to be doing by hand. So I'm going to go in now and I'll show you what we're doing that uh, a bit differently to compared to when we did the external walls. And um, yeah, get cracking. joined us we're on the penultimate lift now before we go up um, once we've put this last last lift of shutter in we're gonna have to fill it from upstairs because we're not gonna have any room of getting in here to do it um, before we do I thought this is a good opportunity we're gonna show you our mixes a little bit about the method we're using to tamp it down because um, we had a question from one of our viewers in an earlier episode who asked about how do we not get clumps inside our hemp creep mixes um, it was a good question we didn't actually know at the time. We were getting them, but we were just breaking them up with our hands as we were filling the walls. Now, I think we might have figured out why we were getting them, because we were getting, we were doing good uh, mixes the same every time, but still getting them. So I think what we've discovered this time is that where the hemp has been compressed inside the plastic bags for a long time, when we're opening them up, the compression is actually what has caused the, uh, the clumping. 
So what we were doing to combat that was going through the whole pile of hemp and sifting through it and breaking up any clumps before we even added any water and lime. So we did that. Um, then we were also mixing the lime outside because it was dusty. We were mixing that with the water outside and bringing it in and adding it, the lime water mixes to the hemp and then turning it all over inside. But what it's been able to do, is like we did use a bell mixer last time and this time we've hand mixed it, but it has been great, especially for this purpose because the mixes have been a lot more uniform. They've been really consistent and it's exactly what we need for this wall. As the viewer who asked that question earlier would probably understand, if there were clumps going in this wall, it's going to show on the finished products. And because this isn't being covered with a render, or maybe it will if it depends on how it looks, but if it, the idea is that it won't, um, so any clumps are going to show up and look rubbish. So having these nice even mixes is, is good. But I'll show you now. I've got a mix here. So this is how it is. See, it's not too wet. It's not too dry. Everything's grey. It's quite loose. You can sort of move it around. Um, so it's like that. So what I'm doing is going, coming in here and we're spreading about two inches over the top of our previously tamped lot of hemp. And we go along, we spread it across the whole way, and then we take Timmy the tamper, and we go over it two times, or a couple of times, like this. And that's literally it. And then rinse and repeat, and on the way to the top. That's the wall done now. Um, we took off half the shuttering last night and we haven't got any video footage of that, or if we do, it's not very good because it was quite dark when we were doing it. Um, the reason we wanted to take it off is because when we were doing the external walls and we left on some of the shuttering for a bit longer than we planned, it actually stuck to the wall a little bit. So when we pulled it away, there was fibers that were left sticking out from the wall, which we wanted to avoid here. So um, yeah, next thing is take off the top half of the shuttering but you, we'll show you that now, but you can see how it looks. It's gonna change color as it dries out, so you'll see in future episodes how it, how it looks. Um, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying the series so far, please give us a like and subscribe, because it apparently helps us out with that uh, algorithm thing. And we'll see you next time.